In exercise 18.15, we have what are called heterocycles for the first time. So carbon is the uh, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon. An atom that is different from carbon is called a heteroatom. The prefix hetero is just means different. And so if you have a heteroatom, an atom other than carbon, in a ring, that ring is called a heterocycle. So you can see this would be a heterocycle because it's a ring with an oxygen in it. This is a heterocycle because it's a ring with a sulfur in it. Each of those are different, our atoms different from carbon. So they're heterocycles. Now the heterocycles often have the atoms that are different. The heteroatoms are often have more than one lone pair. And so whereas up until now, we've treated every lone pair as if it existed in a p orbital, that's parallel with all the others, now, we're not going to be able to do that anymore. Now, we want to figure out, for each of these compounds, we want to determine if any lone pairs are participating in aromaticity. And the lone pairs will participate in aromaticity if they exist in a p orbital that's parallel with the rest of the p orbitals in the molecule, if they satisfy this first condition. And if they can't do that, then they will not participate in aromaticity. So there are three types of p orbitals you could have. You could have py orbitals, px orbitals, pz orbitals. This argument that I'm about to show you, this reasoning, could work with any of those. You just have to pick one. I'm going to pick the py orbital, but the same reasoning would work with any of them. Now in order to have these, p, these pi bonds, you have to have parallel p orbitals on all of those carbons. And let's say those are py orbitals. It, it doesn't make a difference whether they're py, px, or pz, just to have some a, a clarity in what we're talking about. Let me call them py orbitals. Now, in order for one of these lone pairs to participate in aromaticity, it has to be in a py orbital. So let's put one of the lone pairs in a py orbital. Now, it would be really nice if we could fit the other lone pair in a py orbital too. Then they would both be parallel to this whole pi system. But every atom only has three p orbitals. Every Each atom has one py orbital, one px orbital, and one pz orbital coming out at you and going away. We have already used the py orbital on that carbon. There is no second py orbital to fit the other lone pair into. And because of that, the lone pair that has a py orbital that participates in resonance or in aromaticity, I should say, but the other lone pair does not. Now it didn't matter which one I chose, I just chose the one on the left here by chance. It doesn't matter. You could have said the one on the right participates in aromaticity, but in that case, <clears throat> excuse me, in that case, the lone pair on the left would not participate in aromaticity. The point is that at most only one lone pair on an atom can participate in aromaticity because there's only going to be one p orbital that's parallel with all of the other p orbitals in the ring. <clears throat> okay, that's all this question is asking. It's asking you to, ident to determine which, if any, lone pairs are participating in aromaticity. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we go through this next, um, this next, for this next molecule, it's really the same exact set of reasoning. You have these py orbitals on each of these carbons. One of these lone pairs could exist in a py orbital, so that would participate in aromaticity. But the second one could not. This second one. does not participate 
the aromaticity because the sulfur only has one py orbital. It only has one orbital, p orbital, that's parallel to the other p orbitals. So <clears throat> if this lone pair were going to exist in a p orbital, it would have to be, exist in a px orbital. That wouldn't help it. Or a pz orbital. That wouldn't help it align. And so there's no other orbital for it. To, there's no second py orbital for it to fit into. So it would not participate in aromaticity. Here, we have parallel p orbitals on all the carbons in the ring. All right, well, really, with these other ones, I should say, I'm, we're assuming that you can form aromaticity at all. <clears throat> In other words, we're assuming that we have a Huckel's number, which we do here. So, for example, if the one on the here in this first one, we'd have two, four, six electrons in p orbitals, and that's a Huckel's number. So you do get an arom aromatic molecule. And if you do the same thing here, two, four, six electrons, that. Um, six electrons are in the p orbitals and so you do get a Huckel's number so it is aromatic. In this next example you the lone pair cannot participate in aromaticity. Now theoretically you could definitely imagine this can exist in a py orbital for sure but so you do satisfy that first that first criterion of ha for aromaticity which is that you have parallel p orbitals all the way around the ring sure but you do not have a Huckel's number of p electrons in those p orbitals. Two, four, six, eight. Eight is not one of the numbers in the series 4n plus 2. So you don't have one of the Huckel's numbers. So if this did exist in a py orbital, it would be anti-aromatic. which would be really unstable. So it's better to be non-aromatic than anti-aromatic, and this nitrogen would, would be, stay as sp3 hybridized to avoid becoming anti-aromatic. So that lone pair does not participate in aromaticity. It could create a molecular, it could participate in a molecular orbital that creates anti-aromaticity, but it could not create aromaticity. For this next one, it's kind of interesting. You know you have the py orbitals on each of these carbons participating in the pi bond. We've talked about how the sulfur on the top could have one p, uh, one lone pair involved in, in, in aromaticity through the py orbital, but it can't have both. So this one participates but then the, pi, the py orbital is already taken. There's no second py orbital, so the second lone pair does not participate in aromaticity. So here, and you'll notice that with those, that would give you two, four, six electrons in those p orbitals, which is a Huckel's number, so you can create aromaticity that way. This other lone pair on the nitrogen also does not participate in aromaticity. And the reason is uh, the reason is the same as why the second lone pair on the sulfur does not. There's only one py orbital on the nitrogen. That py orbital is already being used by the electrons in the pi bond. So if that lone pair were going to try to ex to exist in a p orbital, it would either exist in a px orbital which couldn't participate in aromaticity, 
or a PZ orbital, which could participate in aromaticity. And the truth is, it, it ends up just existing in an sp2 orbital. But the point is that that lone pair does not participate in aromaticity because the py orbital on that nitrogen is already being used for the electrons in that pi bond. For E, we have parallel p orbitals on each of those carbons. We have a p orbital, py orbital on the oxygen but it's being used for the pi bond, which means there is no py orbital available there for the lone pair. So the lone pair does not participate in aromaticity. It does not participate in aromaticity because there's no second py orbital for it to exist in. And so there's no orbital that it can fly in that would allow it to fly around the whole ring. The py orbital on that, oops, the py orbital on that oxygen is already being used for this pi bond, and so it can't be used for that lone pair. In this next molecule, and here instead of writing out does participate in aromaticity or does not, I'm just going to use a check mark or a cross on a test you would want to write it out, but I think by this point we've got the idea clear. So instead of spending the time writing it out, I'll just put a check mark or a cross. If you draw, we know there are parallel p orbitals on all these atoms because of the, the pi bonds. The pi bonds couldn't exist without those. Because the py orbital is already taken on this nitrogen, those lone pairs are not going to exist in a parallel p orbital with the rest of the ring, so they're not going to participate in aromaticity. And the same thing is true for the lone pairs on the other nitrogen. That nitrogen already has its py orbital for the, being used by the electrons in the pi bond. This lone pair couldn't, cannot exist in the py orbital because there's only one, and so it's not able to spread out in waves all over the ring through those overlapping parallel py orbitals. Neither of those lone pairs participate in aromaticity. In G, you have one lone pair existing in, or participating in aromaticity, and one lone pair not on each of these oxygens. And the reason is, on each of these carbons, you have parallel p orbitals, that's what's making the pi bond, one of these lone pairs can exist in a py orbital that would overlap with that whole thing. Um, but the other one cannot. And actually, when you consider, when you consider um, the number of pi electrons, if you were to assume, because each of these has to exist in a py orbital in order for you to have parallel p orbitals all over the ring, but if you do that, you have a total of two, four, six, eight electrons in those p orbitals. And that's not a Huckel's number. The Huckel's numbers are two, six, 10, 14, etc. So eight is not, so at most, those electrons can participate in anti-aromaticity, but they cannot participate in aromaticity. So actually, none of the lone pairs here could participate in aromaticity. You could have them in parallel py orbitals, but that would give you a total of eight electrons in those parallel py orbitals, which is anti-aromatic. And if they don't exist in parallel py orbitals, then you don't have parallel p orbitals all, the ri all over the ring, which is non-aromatic. So there's no way that you can get aromaticity in this ring. So none of those lone pairs can participate in aromaticity. Finally, for H, we have parallel p orbitals on each of the atoms that have the pi bond. One of the lone pairs on the oxygen does participate in aromaticity because it can exist in a py orbital and it gives us two, four, six electrons in the p orbitals. That is a Huckel's number. The, lone pair, the other lone pair on the oxygen can't 
because the py orbital is already taken up, there's no second one for it to exist in that would allow it to spread out through the whole ring. And for the same reason, the lone pair on the nitrogen is not in a, uh, is not participating in aromaticity because the py orbital here is already being used to form the pi bond there. This pi bond is being formed, the electrons in that are being used to form that, being, are using the py orbitals there. Because the py orbital in this nitrogen is already being used, the lone pair can't use it itself. So you can get a sense that it's a little trickier when you have these heteroatoms to figure out which lone pairs are participating in aromaticity or not, but the general thinking is, the general idea is, first you have to have um, a Huckel's number of electrons in the p orbitals, otherwise you can't have aromaticity at all. And second, if you do have a Huckel's number, at most one lone pair can exist, uh, can participate in aromaticity on one atom, because the atom has only one py orbital, one p orbital that'll be parallel with the p orbitals in the rest of the ring. And a lone pair will not participate in aromaticity if it's on an atom that's already involved in a double bond or a pi bond, because in that case the py orbital is already being used. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in thinking through whether lone pairs participate, lone pairs on heteroatoms participate